can. Um, so um, today I'm going to talk about Con Marie, your PHP. Anyone do not know who, who is Marie Kondo? <laughs> Please raise your hands. Everyone knows? Everyone knows, huh? Everyone, we, we just went through Chinese years, so we do a lot of uh, uh, spring cleaning. So Marie Kondo is a very hot topic. Uh, but I was thinking that as I was um, tidying up my stuff for the new year, I was just thinking, how should I tidy up my code? So basically, I came up with this topic. Okay, so a bit about myself. I started coding PHP back in 2010, back in NUS when I was doing a school project. So I, my first framework was CodeIgniter, which was easy for me to at least learn as opposed to like uh, Symfony. So I then subsequently, I developed a CRM plus a POS plus a HR system using Cogniter, and I shipped it since 2012. So that was my first uh, shipped product as a developer. So 2010 to 2012 is two years. Okay, then after that, I jumped into JavaScript, do a lot of uh, visualization, animation stuff uh, for the government, uh, basically uh, dash, uh, visualization dashboard. Before, in, uh, before I joined SPH 2016, then ever since I was doing Drupal, creating custom modules as well as doing a lot of many other things because SPH has a lot of things that we can do. So that, that's, that's the thing I'm still here today. So, but at some point of time in my life, which is uh, last year, uh, it, it reached to me, uh, it, it dawned on me that I've been doing things, new things and new things. And it's always like switching from framework A to framework B, from PHP to JavaScript. Now I was thinking to myself, as a developer, am I building my depth? You know, so, this, so usually they call us coding monkeys, right? So I, I, I'm a thinking coding monkey. Like. So am I building my depth? Or am I just building breath as a programmer? Am I just learning the various languages, the various frameworks, but I don't go deep enough? So I was thinking about it. I was also thinking about whether my codes, the codes that I write now, last time, is there any difference? Is it better? Is it more elegant? Uh, when my fellow teammates actually look at my code, do they like, ew, what's that? Or do I, oh, wow, ew, why is very nice? So I was, I was thinking about that as well. And so also the, the last point was, after PHP, if I move on to Golang or all this, but then, it's never ending. There always be a new language, a new framework. But then what about me, myself, as a coder? So I chanced upon uh, two books. One of it is Clean Code. The other is Refactoring. You can see them. Uh, this is the second edition of Refactoring. The first edition is, is for Java. This one is for, the second edition is for JavaScript. And you have Clean Code. So they are written by very senior programmers, which is like Uncle Bob and Martin Fowler. And I, I chanced upon the book and I was reading it. So the thing about how they wrote this book was that at certain points in the book, they actually wrote like almost like a self talking to themselves like, oh, actually last time I wrote my code in a very bad way. So hence, I decided that I need to write code in this better way so that um, my fellow colleagues are able to you know, read my code better. So there's a lot of self-reflection in the book as I was reading it. And that, that, that caused me to, to, to spark me on to actually really read deeper and then to actually internalize it and then to practice it on my daily coding adventures. So hence, this is why um, today I'm actually sharing with you uh, some of the learnings that I've, that I've uh, learned, especially this one will be more targeted for refactoring because it really gives you a point-by-point -point technique of how you actually shorten your code, which we will see later. In, uh, I'll code it out so that everyone can see also. So to begin with, uh, Martin Fowler was pointing out that there are a number of code smells. Um, anyone is familiar or not familiar with the term code smells? Familiar? Raise hands. Not familiar? Raise hands. Okay, okay. So code smells is basically like your banana that has been in the fridge for too long and it starts to smell. The same thing, when your code is in your code base for too long and it, it is either too long or people really, really don't understand, then the moment people see that when they are trying to debug something, then they see, oh, I don't know what's this function, I don't want to touch it. That kind of uh, bad feeling that is invoked 
when someone else or you yourself look at the code. Uh, that, is, that is code smells. Uh. And for Martin, Martin Fowler, he actually uh, indicated, so these are a lot, I listed is some of it is like duplicated code. Okay, I'll be very honest, I have duplicated code in my code base. Who is agreeing to this duplicated code? Okay, okay. okay long method. When I was younger as a developer, I have super long methods that are like 50 lines long. It's still in that, remember the 2012 uh, system, uh, I have that, <laughs> that super old here. Yeah. Large class, uh, uh, actually this one I didn't really touch. My PHP mostly procedural, not so much class, but I'm going towards classic, classical PHP. Long parameter list, anyone has this issue when your function has super long parameter <laughs> list? Uh, uh, I also make the same mistake. I also, I also learned. It, it came to a point where shit, like I changed something or I have to amend my function definition already because there's one more one more uh, parameter I need to add. So that, that was what it caused me to start to think. Ah, then one new thing I learned is shotgun surgery. So actually, I, I, find, I, I make it into more singlish. Ah. It means if you want to change one feature, you have to change many parts of your code in different parts of it. This is what you call shotgun. Because with shotgun, you, you are injured with many, many places. This is called shot, shotgun surgery. Okay. So there's more. Ah. But these are the, some of the code smells that I read that was very interesting. And it hit me home. <clears throat> now with code smells then of course we identify a pain we also need to know how we can address our pain so that we, come, we become better and some of the cleaning up strategies like extract method inline method I'll, I'll show you in detail how it actually happens later uh, replace temp with query decompose conditional conditional means your switch statements your if else statements consolidate your conditional expressions and remove control flag Okay, all this I'll show you later, which is going to happen in the next slide. Ah, okay, so let's tidy up. Yeah, so I'm going to sit down. Uh, and I'm going to show you my... This... Uh, okay. So this is uh, a very simple PHP code. Um, it includes a number of uh, simple classes that, I'm, that I wrote uh, to demonstrate uh, some of the, the things that I'm some of the code smell as well as the cleaning strategy. So let's begin with a uh, customer. So there's a customer example. Okay, I initialize you know, as a can, um, 20 years old, it's fake, yeah, it's okay. And I show particulars. Okay, so let's run this program. Okay, so first, we, first of all, we'll see what is it like uh, how the program behaves first before we actually even do any cleaning up. Uh, because maybe let's say after I clean up, the outstanding becomes 20. Actually, the, it's, a, it's a mistake. Uh. It's, uh, if my name is no longer Ken after refactoring, then, then it's no point. It means I've already caused the program to break already. So, okay, let's go back to the code. So, customer. So, I have a customer class. My uh, attributes is name and age. I declare using a constructor. Okay, this is how I actually, you know, uh, show my particulars just now. You know, there's a print, you know, you see the header here, you know. Can, you all can see, uh, let me just increase the size a bit. Yeah. The, the header, then my name and all this, so it's printed over here. So, one of the first things that uh, we can do, actually, is that, do you notice Okay, we notice that this part of the code, okay, the, the name of the function is called show particulars. But these three lines of code actually is just for display purpose, for aesthetic. You just want to show a title. Okay, so one way is we can shorten this because it is just uh, ex extra pieces of information for display purposes. So what we can do is that we can, okay, I, I, I use this. Uh, let me copy and paste this thing. Let me extract. Okay, I create a function called print header. Okay, print header, it takes in a header variable and then I do the magical thing la, to you know display this customer. So what I subsequently can do is basically do this. 
replace these three lines of code with a function. And this function will print my header based on whatever I want to put here. So like, for example, customer, you will print customer. Okay, so after I, so this is what is called as the extract method because you basically compress three lines that doesn't have much semantic meaning to the function. You extract it out and then you, you call yourself a function itself. So people understand, hey, actually, your these three lines, what is it trying to do? It's more clear cut. So with this, let me save. Then let me run the function again. Okay, it still works. So my refactoring is okay. I didn't cause anything to break. So this is the first uh, cleaning strategy, extract method. Okay, second thing I will want to introduce is inline temp. Okay, what is inline temp? We, we noticed that over here, there's this uh, variable called can be applied, okay? Which is assigned with the return value of this function, which is, is employable age, and you pass in the age of the person here. And then if the person's age is employable, then I print out employable. Okay, so actually I ask you, do you all feel that this line is a bit redundant? Please, please raise hand. You, you all need to get the same feeling. Or else I, I scared I'm just talking to a piece of a, a wall. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. if it's redundant, you can just take it straight. Yeah. If this is correct. Yeah, correct, right. So, so, exactly. So, this is actually, so you guys actually can feel it. Is This technique is called inline temp. Uh, it, to, to me, I, I didn't know that because to me, it just felt like a feeling and I'll just do it. But uh, Martin Fowler put a name to this. So next time when we talk to people, we are more posh. It's called an inline temp uh, cleaning strategy instead of like gut feeling. Okay, so yeah, correct. So this is how you actually, uh, you just replace this and basically you can clean up this thing. Okay, then same thing, run again. Yeah, it's still the same, employable. So we have, shorten the number of lines of this code with these two methods, extract method and the uh, inline temp. So, yep. There's another thing though, you notice that uh, is employable, like, like, so actually there's this function called uh, is employable age. And then based on my ruling, I actually said that if the person is more than 16 years old and less than 80 years old, because uh, if you're more than 80 years old, Preferably, you should retire, preferably. But yeah, we know we, we support uh, working elderly. So, but anyway, for the sake of this example, between 16 and 80. But how many people in your code base have this kind of numbers? S what we call as special numbers, like 16 and 80, that when someone else from another company come in, they'll say, what, what is this number about? Anyone has this kind of numbers? Yeah. So, so this is what we call magic constants, which we can avoid. Because the thing is, like what I say, if a new, new joining comes in, why, why is 16? Why is it 16? Why is 80? Why, what, what is this about? Although yes, the function did uh, give you an insight that is trying to say that whether the person is of employable age, but 16 and 80 seems very arbitrary, you know? And next, what if this 16 and 80 is duplicated in many places of your other function? You know, then if you change, you know, if the government changed the CPF withdrawal age, then you know there's a lot of things you need to change. So, change this with your, uh, yeah, use constants. In this case, you have your minimum employable age and maximum employable age, which I define it. Uh, I will need to define it. Yep, it's over here. So I put it at the top of my class. Yeah, so it becomes very clear when the person is looking at the class. Okay, you have all these constants and the meaning of these constants. Yeah. So let's run the program again. Yep, it still works. Okay, don't say I never 
Okay, supposedly we should write more uh, comprehensive tests. Lah. This is just for demonstration purposes. But let's say if I change my customer to 80, 90 years old. Okay, let's see what happens. Eh? Yep, then it doesn't show I'm not employable because there's no line to say I'm employable. Yeah. So these are two techniques. Uh, extract method and the inline temp. Okay, moving forward, I will illustrate the next uh, technique. And what is the next technique? Basically, is is this one? Yep. Okay, we have a product class with this constants like the winter rate, the winter service charge, the summer rate based on the product. It has an attribute of price, which is the unit price. And we have this function called get the bulk price. So get bulk price means you, you, you have a certain amount of quantity and you apply the unit price. Then if, you're, if that amount of price crosses a certain threshold, okay, I give you discount. In this case, the logic is that, you know, if it's more than 1,000, I will discount by uh, 5%. So you just need to pay 95% of the price. But if it's less than 1,000, then you are given only 2% discount. Okay, there's this thing called replace temp with query. So what is replace temp with query? Uh, essentially, based on... Multi so this is actually mirroring very closely to what Martin Fowler uh, provided in his uh, book. First is he wants to actually compress all these lines of code, especially this amount of, this discount factor where there's a if statement and all this. He wants to actually extricate it out, which is by the extract method. And how he does that is actually, you declare a function called discount factor. <coughs> okay. So basically, um, I copied over the logic. I remove this. I call this function <coughs> with the base price. Okay, so this is the first step. Then also, I also get this uh, function to actually get the base price. And I actually substitute it with this thing. Okay. Any comments so far? Because I, I do have comments. Anyone has comments? The discount factor, you can still reduce by the price. The discount factor. How, how so? Exactly, exactly. So you could actually just do this, right? Yeah. Okay. That, that's, that's, one, uh, that's one of the pointers. The other pointer is that you notice Martin Fowler is actually very obsessed with removing uh, code. That means he actually wants a function to be actually as short as possible. To, because when I read this, <coughs> I actually felt that there's a lot of... He's actually... Take, I wouldn't have taken it out if I, if, I, if I was in his shoes, but he actually took out all this base price, which was actually not too different. It was still that same line, but then he extricated it out and used uh, use it as a function instead. So this, this one uh, is open to, so I'm not saying that is, uh, this is what he says. I'll just follow as the months goes by, I'll see how it goes, but uh, I just felt a bit weird when he does that, but just that's my comment. Uh. Not sure how you guys felt it actually. Yeah. But anyway, there's more to it. Eventually, what he actually advocated is 
to actually reduce this to one line of code, which is this thing I replace over here because it's the is the temporary variable. And this thing actually can be replaced as well, it is and it can be used here as well. <coughs> The base price is basically the function called the return function of this thing. So it became one line of code. But it's super aggressive. Because I felt that this it, it was a few at least four or five lines of code, but then it became one line of code. But you do notice here that this function is being called twice. Yeah. So I, I don't have, uh, I, I won't exactly comment as yet, but this is what uh, he actually taught. How you can actually um, really compress your code from five lines into one line. So this is what he taught, and this he calls the strategy as replace temp with query. Okay, then I need to make sure that it's running properly first. <coughs> Let me see, main, okay. Yep, so this is the this is the result. Yeah. Okay, so so far we have seen three steps of uh, refactoring code. Okay, so far is it too mind boggling or too dry or? <laughs> can I can I can? Sorry, just a comment. Mm. Uh, so first thing, I was thinking that the. It will make sense if base price and discount factor is actually used uh, and two or three times. Yes. So it will make sense to uh, actually put into extract into methods. Mm. Then sometimes uh, what we have long methods is sometimes it gives context. So software development is 10% uh, development, 90% maintenance. You probably take one hour to write our code, but probably the rest of the nine years uh, you are maintaining the code. So what is very important is uh, troubleshooting. So for example, let's say this piece of this class is a few thousand lines, right? And then after that, uh, you let's say you sort the way you order a method is by alphabetical order or something like that. So when you see this, right, you need a troubleshoot, right? You need to keep jumping to different places in the class to actually troubleshoot or where is the problem is problem. Whereas uh, these methods are only used once, right? So you kind of lose your context. Right? So it really depends on your it really depends on your use case. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's that's one of the things to consider as well. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So with this, I because of time constraint, I will jump to the last one, which is the super complicated one, which is this function. Let me just can see uh, from behind uh, because I it's, it's easier if you all can see the whole function in entirety. Okay. So this function is a customer list class that holds a, a list of customers as an array. And this function basically checks that the array does not have Don or John, because if either of them appears, then they need to send an alert to say that, oh, there's a, there's a criminal inside this uh, uh, customer list, or there's someone who you know, uh, has, is in a blacklist. So this is the original function check security. We see that there is this found, which is given a false value, which is smelling like a control flag because false true, you use it to, to do toggling in between. Okay. Then we see a for loop, which is fine. You, talk, you follow through that customer list. And while it is not found, you check if Dawn is in the list. If it's in the list, you send the alert. You, and then you toggle the found flag to true. The same for John. Okay, how do you find this piece of code? Can it be clean? Can it be refactored? The names can be stored somewhere, yes. Anything else? Do you, do, you, do you find any two lines of code that actually I can just remove because it doesn't make... It, yes. Correct, correct. Correct. I think you can use if something or something. If 
the personally says John Paul dot. Mm -hmm. They can use <coughs> to leave the body. Correct, correct. Correct, correct, correct. Once you find it, just put it in the mouth. So don't need to put it Yeah. Actually, the first thing is... Yeah. So all these actually are very valid points. But the first thing I... So the first thing I'll address is actually this line of code, which I was hovering at. Actually, this... Actually, don't need it. Because... Okay, la, if let's say you found it, then you exit of the for loop, more, then you return. But then we could have actually just done this, remove this, <coughs> and then return the, return the found, right? Return, then this one, I also can return at the, at the back. Return as false, and then this return as true. How is it? This one? Okay? Sorry? Which one? From where? <coughs> yes, correct. This, this if statement, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. Okay, so next step, I will replace this with a function. <coughs> yeah, so I'm going to call... Uh, find criminal. And then I'll, I'll, I'll transfer this thing here, right? Okay, but then... And then I'll need to actually call this here, find criminal. But is it, uh, what, sh should I return something here? Return this... In that case, is it okay? So, you break? You break. On the first, first one. Okay, so how? <coughs> yeah, let me, let, me, let me look at how Martin Fowler actually wanted us to do. Huh? Okay. Okay, so basically... I'll return the person <laughs> criminal person. <laughs> okay, and then what if? And you also need to do this. Eh? No. Oh yeah. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Wait on, wait on. Let me just do this. Correct. Correct. So the name will be here. Like that? Okay. I think find criminal should accept uh, name and then the the two if condition can be one, right? Yes. Okay. Then what should I return? Return true. Then the rest I just... Okay, but I need to send alert. Huh? Don't forget, we need to send the alert. Huh? Oh, is it okay?
Anything else? Then what, what should be what should be over here? If statement. If statement. Eh? Return. Okay, then what do we what do we get? Cannot, Cannot right? So if so instead of return put if then after that uh then return true. If yeah. If this whole thing return true. So if this fine criminal is criminal. Yes. They return true. Or else you just follow through it. Okay? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. So the moment one person is in the list, you'll just you'll just exit. Yeah, that's the logic. All good? All satisfied with how we refactor and how see how many lines of code have we now how many lines of code is like so short. But there is one small little thing though. Uh, which uh, Martin Fowler actually did uh, say is that then your fine criminal is more than just returning you a value it is also invoking some other function which basically is to send the alert like, like send a SMS or whatsoever so this is what he calls as a, uh, your function is, is doing more than one thing already which is not, not good because Sometimes debugging, you assume that function is just a fine criminal. A, you also send text SMS. Uh, so how 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 can we extract this up? You should bring this up to text security instead of fine criminal. Bring it to where? Uh, reading that yeah, uh, yeah. above this here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. So we done it. Yes. So this is how we actually. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, correct. So it's this this guy. Yep. So yes, we did it. You know. So from actually, you you if you do recall just now, there was quite a number of logic that was going through a for loop. And then inside the folder, we are sending alerts. And then you are also returning a true and false value for this check security function. Now you actually has compressed it in such a way that, in fact, when you read it, you, it's almost like you are reading English because it's like, okay, I have a for loop. I will find a criminal. If, it's, if there is a criminal, I will send an alert. Otherwise, I will just keep going on. You know? Yes. Ah. Like that. Yes. Very nice. Yes. Okay. So I think we are all in the momentum of knowing how, how we can refactor. Huh? Yeah. So okay. So basically, that 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 is uh. So uh, what I've gone through with you guys is actually um some of the cleaning strategies, which. There's a name to it, so it's more than just your gut feeling. Oh, we should do this and that, but there's no uh, there's no terminology to it, and so all this is what we Martin Fowler put a, a particular uh, a few sentence a few phrases to actually describe what this refactoring technique is about. So yeah, so going back to my slides, okay, where's my slides? Okay. So one thing is just now, if you, if you do notice in the first part where I do the refactoring is I always check that how is my original output like, then I refactor, then the moment I refactor something, I usually go back and look at my output. Is it still the same? So that should, base, that should be the basic uh, steps to follow when we are all doing refactoring. And this was also being mentioned by Martin Fowler itself because the, as what you say, it's a process of changing a software, but it does not alter the external behavior of the code. So what does it alter? It actually it alters by improving the internal structure. So that, that is how we, if, if, we, if we live today and then if anyone asks you, oh, what's refactoring? Actually, you, 
you can actually men mention these bold pointers and then you 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 can actually tell people that hey, I know what is the process of refactoring like and some of the cleaning strategies. So I hope these are the takeaways that you guys have for, from my uh, small little sharing. So okay, let's start refactoring today. Yeah, thank you so much.